Hey guys, welcome to day 25 of Discovery. Um, if you have like a throw pillow or just a regular pillow, go ahead and grab it. We are, and if you have your blocks, oh, I have a hair in my mouth, gross. Sorry. If you have blocks, go ahead and grab them as well. Again, you don't need them. But if you have them, they're going to come in handy. Um, we're going to start off today bringing the pillow onto our mat. And then we're going to slowly walk our legs out into frog pose. So your groin area is not going to touch the mat right away. That comes with time. But by doing this posture and resting, in this posture for a good amount of time, that will help open up your hips. It will help make you more flexible to eventually be able to do your splits and your middle splits, AKA straddle. So bringing that pillow underneath so you can rest on it, coming onto your forearms. You can also use two pillows, three pillows, whatever you need for height, feel free. You can also use your blocks. You don't have to use any of it if you don't want. So let's just rest here for a moment, just breathing. I prefer ujjayi breath, which is breathing in through your nose, out through your nose, with a slight restriction on the exhale. It kind of sounds like Darth Vader or like the waves and the ocean. And I prefer that breath because it reminds myself to breathe. Um, when it's a more intensive pose or something that requires a lot of strain, then I prefer to exhale out through my mouth or even a quick rapid exhale through my mouth because it does help to um, take my mind off of the pain. <laughs> I don't know, just something I've noticed over time. All right, let's take two more deep breaths. And slowly Walk it back up, bring your toes in, and then coming into tabletop. Bring your knees together, let's sit back, child's pose. Forehead to the mat, take a breath. Walk it over to the right. Take a breath. Come back through center. Over to the left. Take a breath. And bring your hands behind, forehead back to the mat. This time interlacing your fingers behind your back and lifting those Hands up towards the sky, opening up those shoulders, opening up the upper back, breathing. And gently release those hands and come into your tabletop. Knees come out as wide as your hips. Hands under your shoulders, tighten your core. We're gonna bring that right leg out, left arm out. Square those hips. Deep breath in. Exhale, round it in. Stretch it out and then kick up that arm and the leg. Breathe in. Exhale, stretch it out, kick it up. And lower down. 
Other side. Left leg comes out. Right arm comes out. Square those hips. Tighten the core. Breathe in. Exhale. Kick it up. posture actually. Walk those hands out, slowly bringing the chest towards the mat. Forehead can come to the mat or if you have a little bit more back flexibility, chin can come to the mat. Breathe. belly. Come into a T. We're going to start turning over to the right, opening up that back. chest, opening up those shoulders, breathing. And come back to your belly. Hands under the shoulders, curl those toes. Come into your first downward dog. Again, we're Really aiming for a perfect V. Elbow to the sky. And you can walk it out, stretching those calves, hamstrings, heels. sit back because you're not going to feel it. Breathing. Come back through. Hands to thigh. And frame that foot. Pop up on the back. Come into your first plank. We're going to turn into side plank. If you 
you need your kickstand, go for it. <laughs> and deep breath in. Exhale, bring that arm under, twisting, and then open it up. Breathe in, exhale, open it up. Breathe in, exhale, twist, and come back to high plank. And then we're gonna turn to the left, sorry, turn to the right, left arm to the sky. Put your kickstand up if you need it. Breathe in, exhale, twist. Coming back to high plank. Knees come down, chest and chin, feet flat to the mat. Booties in the air. And hands under those shoulders, curl those toes. Rise up, downward dog. The more you shorten your downward dog stance, the less um, strain it puts on your wrists and your arms. But your heels might come up a little higher. That's okay. All in good time. Breathing. And let's step it up. Right foot, left foot, forward fold. Activating the quads, tightening the core. A little more weight towards your toes. You can sway it out here if you want. Or just let it hang. Back together. 
together. Come into forearm plank. So we're gonna tuck the tail. So we don't want our butt up in the air. We don't want our hips sagging. We want a tight core. And by doing that, if you tuck your tailbone, you'll really feel it in your core. We're gonna breathe in, exhale, right leg kicks up. Breathe in, exhale, left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Now, knees drop down. Tabletop. Back to downward dog. Walk her out. Stretching those heels. Taking deep breaths. Coming into that perfect V. And on your next breath in, left leg reaches high. Open those hips, stack those hips, bend that knee, shoulders and arms square to the front. Breathe in, exhale, bring it through center, step it up, lower down. Hands interlace on top of that thigh, sinking into that hip. Right hip comes forward, left hip comes back. Take a few breaths. And then we're gonna come back to runner's lunge. Again, don't sit back. Stay high. If you need more of a stretch, you can walk those hands out, keeping a flat back. Nice long spine. Deep breaths. Coming back through. Rise up. Sink a little deeper. Right hip comes forward, left hip comes back. So instead of me coming this way, I don't wanna do that. I wanna twist my body so that my hips are square to the front. Fingertips, frame that foot. And I'm gonna start turning. You can also fold your mat to give yourself some cushion. Coming into gate pose. We're gonna start by stretching it over to the left. Keeping that chest open and reaching up and then over, and then hands to the mat, or hand to the mat. Stretch that left arm over that ear. Perfect line from finger to toes. You can flatten that back foot if your toes were curled under. Walk those fingers out a little. Lift that leg. See if you can bend it in, grabbing the top of that foot and stretch it open. Get a better grip on it because my fingers are slipping. Opening your chest. And let's come to the other side. So this time, fingertips to the mat, right leg comes out long. We're gonna stretch it over to the right. So over towards the leg that's out long. Open chest, reaching up and then slightly over rather than that. We wanna keep our spine strong and healthy so that when we're 80, we're not hunched over. We're gonna be standing up nice and tall and strong. All right, and now we're gonna bring our fingertips to the mat, stretch that right arm over that ear, perfect long line from fingertips to toes. Breathe 
breathing. Lifting that leg, grabbing that foot, and then opening that chest, stretching that leg back. Breathing. And gently release. Let's come. Let's come into a wide stance. into flat back, up on your fingertips, and then forward fold from the hips. You can have a small bend in your knee if you need. You can reach those hands through. And fingertips come back front and let's stretch it over to the right bending the right knee the left knee is straight coming back through center stretch it over to the left coming back through center over to the right back through center over to the left back through center and this time we're going to walk over, straightening that right leg, popping up in those fingertips, nice straight spine. My left foot is flexed, and then I'm going to walk my fingertips over to the left side, or in front of that left foot. I'm going to flex my right foot out long and I'm going to open up my chest. And then we're going to do it again on the other side. Eventually our feet will be flat on the mat. If you want to walk it out a little deeper this time, go for it. Let's walk it over to the other side. Walking it out a little deeper. Breathing. And come back into your wide-legged pose. Right hand comes to the middle. Twist that left arm open to the sky, twisting from your hips. Breathing, you can take a bind. Left hand coming to right thigh. Just make sure those shoulders are stacked and open. Breathing. And replace that right hand with your left. Right hand comes to the sky. Twisting from the hips. If you want to do a bind, Left hand, I'm sorry, right hand to left thigh. Shoulders nice and open. Breathing. Again, a great twisting pose for detoxification. So make sure you drink your water. And come back through center. We're gonna walk. Bending that foot, I'm sorry, turning that foot, bending that knee. Turning on the back foot. Coming into a high lunge. We're gonna lower on that back foot and we're going to rise up to warrior one. Opening that chest, straightening that back leg, bending on the front leg, and open it a little wider into your warrior two. Arms come out. Make sure that both arms are even. Looking over that middle finger. Breathing. Coming into extended side angle. 
There should be a perfect line from your fingertips down to your toes. We're not hunched over like this. Straight spine, open chest. Let's frame that foot, turning on the back foot. Step that back foot up a little closer, coming into your pyramid pose. Now in pyramid, I don't want you rounding your back over it. I'd rather you keep your back nice and flat, and eventually you'll be able to bend over that leg with a nice flat back. But the, the goal is not to get your nose all the way to your knee. The goal is to have a flat straight back and be able to melt over that leg with a flat spine. Walking those hands out in front, coming into your standing split. Grab a block. We're going to try to open up into half moon. Do the best you can. If you need to still look down, feel free. And step it up into forward fold. Walk those legs out. I know that's a lot on your, that right leg, or sorry, the left leg, which is the left side. And then let's forward fold, activate those quads, tight, tight core, bending over those thighs, breathing, and slowly roll up, breathe in, arms overhead, exhale, hands to heart. Let's do um, a quick Balancing posture, and then we're gonna do the other side. If you wanna try your balance postures on your block, feel free. If not, it's okay. We're gonna do tree pose. So let's start out by standing up, standing nice and tall. I cannot talk today, I don't know what's happening. Standing up nice and tall, hands come to your heart. Bringing your foot wherever you can stand comfortably. Just not on your kneecap. Finding your focus about five feet in front of you. And just breathe. Maybe you bring your arms overhead. Forward fold, 
Hands come to the mat. Coming into high plank, chaturanga. Breathe in. Exhale. Open it up. Come into your downward dog. Walking it out. Finding that triangle pose. Perfect V shape. Not triangle pose, but you know what I mean. You want to look like a triangle. All right, let's lift that right leg. Coming in through the center, lift that knee up high, like you want to touch your chest. Step it up. Then we're going to walk through the center, and we're going to turn that foot coming back into a wide-legged pose. And you can bring those hands in between. Small bend in your knee if you need. This time we're going to walk left hand to right, wait, left hand to right ankle. Wow, that took me a minute. Right arm to the sky. Again, you can bind it. Breathe. And come back through to center. We're going to bring that right hand to left ankle now. Open it up. You can bind it. Breathe. Make sure your weight doesn't fall back into your heels. And unravel. Halfway lift. We're going to start walking over to the front, turning that front foot and turning that back foot. Opening that chest, turn on that back foot, rise up, warrior one, if you need to make that stance shorter, feel free. We want our upper body towards the front of our mat, front leg bent, back leg straight, back kneecap lifted, breathing, and let's open up. Widen your stance, warrior two, arms come out. Make sure those arms are even. Looking over that middle finger. Humble warrior, perfect line. Fingertips to toes, 90 degree angle in that front leg. Breathing. Slowly turning to frame that foot, turning on the back foot, stepping that back foot up closer, pyramid pose. Again, we want a flat back. We should still feel the stretch, even though we're not rounding over that leg. We should still feel the stretch behind that leg, in that hip, even in your back if you're in flat back. Bringing the weight into that front foot, coming into your standing split. And let's try half moon. You can use your block here if you don't need it. You can use your fingertips. You want to flex that back foot, lift the left arm towards the sky, and eventually we'll turn and open our bodies to the left. <sighs> and step it up. Walk out those legs. We did a lot of leg work today, so you're gonna feel, feel this tomorrow for sure. Forward fold, so again, activate those cores. Activate the quads. That will give you a better bend. So you can really see the difference. If I were just to forward fold without doing any of that, my spine is rounded. I'm not feeling the stretch as much. But if I really activate the quads and then tighten my core, 
I can feel myself press in closer. And I feel my tailbone rotate up towards the sky. Fingertips to the mat. Bring those feet together. We're going to slowly start bending. But before we come down all the way, come on to the balls of your feet. And maybe keep your fingertips on the mat. Maybe you let go and bring hands to your heart. Lifting yourself up, breathing, fingertips, go ahead and sit back. That was tough, right? My legs are on fire. Now, bringing that block or something similar, it could be a book maybe, uh, even your pillow if it's that wide, I would say your pillow would work as well. And we're gonna slowly sit back, bringing our feet as close to our glutes as possible, keeping that block there by squeezing those knees together. Hands come down, and we're gonna come into bridge. Deep breath in, exhale, lift. You can also hollow out your upper back by squeezing your shoulders under you. See if you can lift your right leg without letting go of the block. And don't come higher than your knee on the other side. Bring it back in. Keeping that core and tummy lifted. Breathe in. Exhale. Lift the left leg. Bring it in and lower it down. Bringing that block in between those feet. Now it can be the pillow, it doesn't have to be the block. Bringing your hands behind your head, keeping those elbows wide. Breathe in, exhale. Lower down about halfway and bring it back up. Breathe in, exhale, bring it up. sit on my hands a little, <sighs> opening my chest, bring those knees in, breathe in, exhale, right leg, in, left leg, in, right leg, in, start to marry the breath. So keeping that leg suspended, I'm not dropping it down, I'm just kicking it out and bringing it in. Going at your own pace, just make sure you're not wobbling and throwing your body all over the place, keep it controlled. Good morning, 
stretch. Really stretch all and feet come up straight. Bringing my right hand toward, over on the other side of my left leg. My left hand is on the mat, keeping my neck and spine long, keeping that piece of fruit so I'm not crunching my neck. And I'm going to pulse, very small pulse, letting my abs and my core do all the work. Both 
to six bones on the mat. So if you find you're doing this, you need to have both six bones on the mat before you stretch all the way over. And rise on up. Let's bring those legs in. And let's get cozy. If you have your pillow still, I highly recommend placing it under your sacrum, your lower back. Oh yeah. Legs out long. Arms down by your side. Close your eyes. And let's breathe. Slow, deep, steady breaths. Imagine you're floating in the ocean with the sun on your face, nice and warm. The wind just blowing. The sound of the wind, the sound of the birds, the sound of the waves. Just completely surrendering yourself body, your mind, your soul, and allowing your body to sink and melt into your mat, giving your body, your mind, and soul the gift of peace, we're worthy of it. from chanting. 
So when we do the Om, it's two of your chakras that benefit. I know crown is one and third eye is the other. So there is benefits and it somehow benefits your endocrine system. Also, one of the girls that does my videos said her daughter comes out every time she hears us chanting the Om and she wants to join in. And I think that's amazing. Like, and she even wants to do her own yoga. We're talking a little girl. So that's amazing. If your kids are watching you, you should be very proud of yourself because you're setting them a great example. And this will be their normal, like to move their body, to treat their body with kindness and love and honor and cherish their well-being. So you're setting a great example. Anyways, this video is gonna be so long, I'm so sorry. Hands in your lap, sitting up tall. Let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. But this particular mudra, if you hold it for at least 15 minutes a day, yes, 15 minutes, it aids in weight loss. So, 15 minutes in this mudra. I'm telling you, try it out. I don't know how it's going to help, but it's what I've read. Just go with it. All right, deep breath in. Uh... Hands to heart. Thank you guys so much for practicing alongside of me today for day 25. I enjoyed every moment of it, and I'm feeling super yoga stone, which is my favorite. Thank you guys again so much. Namaste. And I hope to see you guys for tomorrow, day 26. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.